were the stalking antelope in the African plains, foxes in the field of southern England, or this, feral pigeons in a farmer's barn in Staffordshire. You have to approach your quarry carefully and with plenty of forethought. You can tell this is a perfect environment for feral pigeons. Uh, there's a grain store, there's plenty of uh, feed in here. The rafters are, provide great places to roost. You can see by the floor there's plenty of scat. These guys obviously live in here full time. Just gonna make our way around the barn, just nice and steady, using all of these bags and this machinery as cover, uh, using these nice range-finding binos, because uh, it is a big shed. We do need to make sure that we're checking our ranges. Uh, the rifle zeroed for 15 yards and 35 yards. This probably shoots about an inch high um, at 20. But any further than that, 40, 50 yard shots, there's a couple of inches difference and we don't want to be causing any damage to the asbestos or to the wooden framework here. So we're going to make our way around and, and see, what, see what we can find. You see those two up there on the rafter, on the beam? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to take the one on the left. You're going to take the one on the right. Okay. On three. Is that one, two, three? Or one, two, three? One. On three. One, two, three. Got it. This is a livestock feed protection exercise. What mean? Once we've planned our approach, the shooting can begin. There's two more up there. Reload. I'll take the left, you take the right. One, two. Good shot, mate. Well done. so far. These guys, these pigeons haven't been shot for a while. Now look, the good thing is these air rifles, these day state air ranges are very quiet. Mine's got a silencer on with a carbine barrel and Keith has just got a shrouded shred, barrel. So we've taken a few shots, we've missed a couple but they don't seem overly concerned. They're flying out, just flying around a couple of times and coming back in. So if we just hold fire for a little bit we should get a few more shots. So, pretty good day so far, and say it in a bag. So what we're gonna do now, I think we've pretty much uh, shot this out. Why don't we head back and uh, back to Fonty's place and we'll see what we can do in the yeah, sheds. So we can get some more up there. Let's do it. So we're in between barns and we've got five minutes just to run through the equipment I've been using today. Today is ranger day, both from my clothing and also my rifle. This is a day state air ranger. Now, I've been using a Daystate Air Ranger 80 uh, on my travels in Zimbabwe, which is the higher powered version. This is a sub 12 foot pound standard version, but in its tactical form. It's got a black Duracoat stock, highly protected, and it's also got a carbine barrel with an Airstream Mark V silencer. It's in 177 caliber, as I said, although I do shoot uh, 25 and 22 FAC versions for larger game. In and around buildings, you really don't need the extra power. Shot placement is more important, both in terms of dispatching the quarry and also not causing unnecessary damage to buildings. So on top of that, I've got my light stream 4.5 to 14 by 44, as I mentioned. Now this is a very good quality scope. It retails for around 400 quid, but the quality of optics is outstanding. This is the same scope that I use on my uh, Hunter Field Target competition rig uh, to great success. So because of the quality of the lenses, it means you can go into and out of buildings and whereas your eyes are transitioning with the light it still delivers a very good sight picture so this is an excellent combination it's done very well today. Keith has been using the standard version of the Daystate Air Ranger which has a wooden stock and a slightly longer shrouded barrel so you don't need the silencer and he's used it to great effect too. So onto my clothing. From the bottom we're in and around farmyards and we all know what exists on the floor there so I've got my wellies on. These are La Lacrosse Alpha Burley Sports side zips. So moving up Ranger trousers and Ranger jacket. Now 
the Ranger outfit from Rivers West is probably their most versatile range of clothing. There's plenty of storage options here, both chest and bellows pocket, so you can carry all your gear around with you. You don't need to use a rucksack. Obviously, we've been hunting in and around barns, and the car's been close by, so we didn't need to take much gear anyway. But even if you go on an extended stalk and you're some way away from your car, you can take your ammunition, you can take your, your knife and your, and your tissues if you're a killer to make sure you can clean yourself up. So it's a, it's a fantastically versatile jacket. The most important thing that we've been using today, as you've seen on video, is the these are the Zeiss uh, Victory 10x45 range-finding binoculars. Now, I'm very keen on safety, and it's very important when you go into a barn that you can get a good sight picture, you can see exactly where the pigeons are. Now, you don't want to be putting your rifle scope up there and, and scanning the beams with it with your rifle scope, because pointed a loaded weapon is obviously it's not the safest way to do things. And these binoculars are very good. They've got perfect aperture for low-light conditions, and they're very crisp, crisp clear lenses. Of course, a little bit expensive, but what it does, it gives you the opportunity of not only spotting the game, but range finding exactly how far away it is. So it's worth the extra money if you can afford to, if you can afford to stump up for these. So that's what we've been using. We're off to, to Fonties now to see what we can find in this afternoon's stalk. You need the farmer on your side. And you need the farmer to know that you're on his side. The reason we've called you in is because of the pigeons are destroying the crops, causing messes in the barns, and which slows up the growth stages and so you boys have come in to control the numbers so we're not going to have this damage in future. What sort of mess do they cause in the, in the barn? The sheds there have caused uh, muck and everything over the machinery which burns the paint and that sort of thing. We also get, keep them out of the crop stores which are food stores and if they'll get in through any available gap and they also cause uh, they're uh, des defecating within the food stores which you don't want. Back at the shooting, and the ferals are still providing plenty of challenges. Another pigeon's just flown into the barn over here, and um, Keith hasn't had a brilliant day shooting. It's not up to his usual high standard, so a little bit of an argument to see who should take the shot, because I like to make sure the bird goes in the bag. But, you know, Killer's pretty keen, pretty confident he can get it, so it's down to you now, Killer. So, Keith, what do you have to say? Watch and learn. There's actually two birds in here, so what we're going to do is on three, we're going to see how Bonnie trots. Mr H1, Mr Killer, zero. For the record, that was Ian shooting. Bring it up, come on, bring it up, bring it up, bring it up. So look at the mastery, man over beast. Come on, you. Here. Here. Bring it on. Bring it on. Good dog, good dog, good dog, good dog, good dog. Bring it on. Killer's going in. Are you having a few problems? Yeah. I'm going to have to go in. Be brave, you know. As you can see, uh, Keith is a highly trained gun dog handler. Um, he's still trying to get that bird from that soft uh, mouth spaniel over there. But this is not unusual. If you experience uh, seeing Keith operate in the field, this is pretty much par for the course. Um, we can faintly hear the sound of Benny Hill's theme tune in the background playing. Uh, it's not going to get any better. We might get that bird back in one piece. I know he's been successful. That'll be my glove then. So, enthusiastic little fellas. As you can see, perfect um, heart shot. It's just above the uh, just above the chest in, in the crop area. And when you're shooting pigeons inside, it's always best to go for something which has got a good sized target area. Obviously the best shot is a head or a neck shot. But by the time you get through the feathers, the neck is actually very small. You know, the head bobbing around all the time, you might not get a clean shot and you might hit the building. Uh, luckily for me, uh, this thing, as you saw, it dropped straight away, it died straight away, and I've got all these helpful retrievers to, to help me pick my birds. So, go on then guys. So we've had a great day. We've knocked over 12, Mark's really happy, the air range have performed perfectly. We're going to go back in a couple of weeks' time and stay on top of them.